Hello again, my dudes. Uh, Kadima with another God of War Ragnarok video. Um, this time, the build we are using is what I decided to call the strongest build in the Nine Realms. The reason for this name has to do with two uh, mainly things. The number one thing is this build is entirely focused on strength, uh, being the number one stat for it. And also because we will be using the Nine of Realm, the Nine Realms uh, buff. Um, so this is what the build entails. For the armor, we are using the Viders armor uh, set, the complete set. The chest says combo finishers have a high luck chance to increase Kratos strength and stagger resistance for a duration. It is the number one set in the game for strength um, purposes. So it gives us 116. Strength and 68 defense, uh, not so worried about the defense. For the wrist, we are using the Braces of Might, Vider's Braces of Might, uh, which says combo finishers do increase damage, and if you combine this with the waist part of the set, you get a 20% finisher damage boost. Uh, the wrists alone give us 115 strength, the waist will give us 40 strength and 74 defense, and again combines with the wrists for the 20% finisher damage boost. For the amulet, we are using one elm, one enchantment um, of each of the realms, so we can get the so-called secret uh, buff, which is called the Nine Realms. Uh, the buff increases your melee damage for a duration, it lasts for about 9 seconds. As there you go, nine rounds. Um, we tried to use enchantments that grant strength above all. Unfortunately, uh, there is no way to have each and every single one of them give us strength because some of the enchantments, such as the Midgard set, as you can see, none of the Midgard set will give you strength. So we are using Niflheim's Justed Wits 20 strength and defense, Asgard Force Fortitude with 12 strength and 3 cooldown, Muspelheim with 12 strength, 3 runic, Alheims with 12 strength, 3 vitality, Alfines which gives us 10 strength, Vanaheims which gives us 9 strength for luck, Bartolfines which gives us 8 strength, 5 defense, Ute Nines which gives us 6 on all stats, and Midgard's Justice uh, I picked up the one that gives us 12 runic and 3 cooldown, um, just to round up the, the runic uh, stat to 160. Uh, as you can see, we have 693 strength. This is not as high as strength can be achieved in the game. You can have 700 if you want. Uh, I could be using uh, Asgard's Virtue instead of Midgard's Justice. That would give me uh, 7 strength um, and 7 in defense, vitality cooldown, but <laughs> it would mean we would be using 2 of um, Asgard's enchantment sets and we would lose the buff the 9 realms. So I would rather go with a buff just for using something different um, for this build. As for the weapons, we are using the Leviathan Axe with the Furious Maul, simply because it gives us 63 strength. It also has a high luck chance to grant a gift of strength on any axe kill, which can be useful when you are fighting multiple enemies or boss after boss with the boss rush challenge that we are about to complete in a minute. For the light and heavy runic attacks, it's entirely up to you. I use my favorites, but in this particular build, the runic attacks that you choose are entirely up to you. For the blades, uh, we are using the Deadly Obsidian Handles, again because it gives us a 63 stat boost, and also says low luck chance to grant a Rage Burst on any blade skill. Again, if you are fighting multiple enemies, uh, this can come in handy to, give, to build up your Rage, but if you are fighting bosses just like the Berserker or Gna, this is pretty much useless when it comes to the, the perk. For the light and heavy runic attacks, again, it's entirely up to you. I like to use Rampage of Furies. Uh, the Nemean Crush is the one that I change between fighting the Berserker and fighting Gna, as I do in most of my videos. The Drop Near Spear, 
In this case, we are using the Hind of the Four Winds because it gives us 34 strength, 29 defense, and it also adds a concussive wave to the end of the R2 combo. In this case, this is probably the only one that gives us uh, a perk that we will be using because our armor set increases the damage from combo finishers. And this one will give you a concussive wave on the finishing move of the R2 combo for the spear. So it does give you a little boost, nothing massive, but it can help. For the light and heavy runic attacks, same story as the previous two weapons. You use whatever you choose. I use my favorites, Thrust of a Thousand Soldiers. Uh, the heavy, I use the honor of the fallen when I'm fighting the berserker or multiple enemies. When I change and fight the Valkyrie, I always use the finger of ruin because it does um, it does stun her and keep her in place for a duration, which allows me to swap between runic attacks and weapons. For the shield, we are using the dauntless shield because we like to parry. Um, it gives us 130 defense like every single shield and a cooldown of 26. Uh, unfortunately, um, the cooldown we have with this build is very low. It's only 47, which is a shame. Um, but again, this build is not focused on anything else other than strength and using the buff, the Nine Realms. For the shield attachment, we are using the Round of Purification simply because it gives us more strength. Uh, the perk itself, when Kratos is afflicted with frost burn by poison or by frost, Shield Strike by double, uh, double tapping L1 hits will cleanse the status and deal that element's damage, damage to the enemies. It can be useful when fighting the Berserker, for example, and you are covered in Bifrost. If you do the, the double tap L1, you will cleanse yourself of Bifrost and you will also deal some damage. It's not a massive damage, it's just a tiny little bit, but it helps. Anything helps. Parton Rage. Um, against the Berserker King, I used Fury just because against the Valkyrie Queen, I like to use Wrath. Um, but it's again, this one is entirely up to you. For the Relic, I was using the Talisman of Mine before um, I killed the Berserker King. Once I killed the Berserker King, as everybody should, I just changed to the Hilt of Skofnook to fight Gna. I'm just going to do a quick run of the Boss Rush, Rush Challenge for you to see how the build performs against multiple enemies one after the other, uh, and then I will follow with showing you how it performed against the Berserker King and Gna. Just one more thing I forgot to mention for this particular build. We want Freya to be using Sonic Arrows as much as possible, uh, simply because uh, I, I have come to understanding that one of the things that helps the Nine Realms buff to proc is your enemies getting stunned. Uh, it doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes when your enemies get stunned, um, the Nine Realms buff tends to proc. Um, I haven't yet concluded what makes the proc, uh, the, the perk activate. It's a bit random for what I can tell. There isn't something that you can do to 100% make the, the Nine Realms buff activate. But uh, for after different tests and doing different things, I have found that the things that tend to make it proc is either use your relic, um, get the enemy's status like stunned or frosted or burning also sometimes triggers the Nine Realms buff. Um, getting them stunned also helps. Um, so yeah, I, I can't tell you what makes it activate 100% guaranteed, but it's just it's just a matter of maybe you guys try it for yourselves. Maybe you come to a conclusion that I haven't just yet. Now, here we go for the boss rush challenge. Just so you guys can see how this thing works. Uh, see? We activated the perk. I don't want to finish because if we finish, we'll lose the perk. Oh. 
There you go, she's down. Gives the strength because we got a kill with the axe. Oh, he didn't even touch me. That one didn't even touch me, but okay. God, that parry didn't come out. Oh my God. Poor dodging skills going on. I was greedy. I was greedy, so I got what I deserve. Anyway, as you as you saw, th again, it's very random to get the nine rooms buff to proc. I can't tell you exactly what makes it work. Um, you sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. Um, but maybe you guys, by using the build yourselves, will be able to find out um, exactly how it works. Now, now that I've showed you how it works against multiple enemies, um, one after after the other, let's focus on doing the Berserker King and Kna. I hope you guys enjoyed it so far, and maybe you try this build for yourselves. Right, here we go. Let's summon the Berserker King. We start with the Spear. We got the parry. Second parry. Third parry. Do the dodging. Fortunately... For him, he dodged too. Now we get a light runic attack with a spear. We trigger the explosions. We suck the element out. Get some more damage with the spear. We got the day's resistance, which is very useless in this case. Got another parry. Another parry. You see, we broke his guard and nothing activated, but then I activated the light runic attack with the blades and we got the Nine Realms buff, as you can see, on the bottom left corner. And um, here we go dodging these little explosions. Get another parry. We activate the permafrost on the axe. We activate the talisman. We get another parry. Nine Realms buff is active again carry these little ranged attacks, he gets his shield up, we will have to use the spear to get rid of it, unfortunately I miss my heavy runic attack with the spear, but I got rid of the sh most of the shield with the ranged attack, he got me here so I will protect myself by switching on the rage, dodge these ones, parry these ones, Get another combo in. We activate the 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 maelstrom. We do the light runic attack, and we get the nine realms buff activated again. Try to parry these just to build up his stun. It helps on the long run. We do the light runic attack with the axe. We activate the nine realms one more time. We make him come down. Whoop, parry, get some more damage in, parry this as well, we, we did manage to parry, I mistimed it, so I protect myself by activating the rage, he's nearly dead, we activate the permafrost, try to do some damage with the shield while he's flying, he gets stunned, we get the axe back in our hand and we finish the job, there we go, he is dead. We had a lot of activations of the Nine Realms buff, as you saw, about four or five times. Let's go for Gnar. Let's settle this. 
let's settle this then. So we start with the running R1 to the heavy runic attack with the spear. We quickly swap and do the heavy runic attack with the blades. Just by the end of it, we activate the Freya's runic summon. We get all that damage in, we activate the permafrost, close the distance, pressure out of the sky, get some more combos in for that 20% uh, combo, combo finishers damage. We activate the nine rounds in the meantime. No, f no flying for you, my dear lady. We do some more runic attacks to get that damage going and build up the stun as much as we can. We activate the permafrost. Gotta dodge this one. Nine realms is active one more time. We dodge these, dodge these. Close the gap. Oh! He nearly got me there. Get some more damage in. Relentless Might active. Gotta dodge these as well. Get some more R1s in. I noticed I activated the permafrost there, so I did a rage attack. I activated the permafrost while the nine realms was buffed up. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, as I finish her off, please consider subscribing if you haven't yet. All support is very much appreciated. Uh, and I hope I see you guys in my next video as well. This is Karima saying goodbye, and I hope you have a lovely day. Cheerio!